Hello and welcome to part three. If you watched part one and two, then thank you very much. Um, but I've got to be honest with part three, <laughs> I kind of uh, I kind of lost my rag a little bit. I got pissed off with trying to um, like I was going to I was going to paint the mask and I was going to film all of it and I was thinking about getting maybe like five parts out of this whole thing, you know. Um, and I was going to talk about the paints I was using and how I'm going to do it and blah, blah, blah. I'll try and drag the video out for as long as possible, you know. But um, I, I always forget how, like, f irritating and fucking aggravating it is. <laughs> trying to actually, the physical act of trying to film yourself doing something just gets on my nerves. Because there's only, I always end up losing my rag and getting pissed off because... It's like there's nowhere that you can put the camera phone where it isn't in your fucking way. It's so annoying. It's like wherever I want to put it to get the best angle is directly in the way of what I'm trying to fucking do. And so like I keep hit, hitting the, uh, the the camera phone with the end of my brush and stuff like that. It's just, I mean, what's annoying is that to film myself doing things, I have to lean back and then kind of stretch my arm out and like... That, that's not how I work. But when I'm working on something, I'm I'm right up close against it. Like I mean, when I'm drawing, I'm hunched right over with my face practically on the paper because you know what I'm like for doing all those little tiny hyper details and stuff. Um, so like whenever I try to film myself, I'm either in the way, my face is in the way of what it is I'm trying to do, or the phone is in the way of my face. Anyway, whatever. So yeah, I was going to explain what I'm doing and my thinking behind the paints that I'm using and blah, blah, blah. But um, basically, I, I couldn't be asked, but I filmed some stuff anyway. And I mostly filmed, uh, well, I say that, it was, it's, again, it's like half an hour long. <laughs> so I obviously filmed more than I thought. But um, I, I basically filmed one of the eyes. I was doing one of the eyes. And I hope you enjoy watching that at least whilst I read out the rest of the questions. Uh, so let's go straight back into it. Um, the first one from part two was, what's your favourite dump to take? And I think I well and truly answered that. Um, the second question from Bunny was, frog butts or chimp balls? So that's frogs, frogs' asses or chimpanzees' testicles. And then she's written in brackets, no explanation. So literally just frog butts or chimp balls. Um... Which one do I prefer, I guess, is the only way I can take that. I know I don't like... I mean, I like... Yeah, frogs... Frogs' butts. Frogs... Frogs have got good arses. I mean, some of them haven't got any arses, especially those, uh... Those, like, luminous green and blue rainforest frogs. Um... They haven't even got an arse, have they? They're just, like... Just legs down there. <laughs> but you know those ones that you keep seeing at the moment? There's those little... Podgy tiny fat frogs that look really grumpy with a little mouth and they let out that loud that high pitched squeaking noise um they've got good asses on them they've got really good cute chubby little asses i think most uh, most frogs are kind of um disgusting to look at i mean they're intriguing and they're cool and everything and like you can say the same about insects but like most insects and most frogs and reptile things they're usually quite gross, aren't they? You don't tend to look at many of them and think, oh, that's cute, because they all look like fucking aliens, especially insects. Um, so frog, frogs' asses, I prefer over chimp balls. I really don't like... Uh, chimps, uh, m monkeys and stuff, they have horrible fucking dicks. Like, all of their dicks look like... Um, when you see other cocks in the animal kingdom away from a human's cock... Like, they all look like they were trying to imitate our fucking genitalia and got it wrong. They all look like they're trying to look like our penises and then just, like, or, or, or vaginas and couldn't figure it out and got it wrong. Like, a monkey's cock is fucking horrible. It's like that little pink Smurf hat that's just, like, dangling down. And I, I don't think I've even seen it erect. And, like, when they get erect, they don't seem to get any bigger either. They just, like... I mean, the most human-looking cock out there in the animal kingdom is probably a horse's cock but um but that looks fucking disgusting as well i mean you can forgive it for having such a massive one because it's you know how else is it going to stick it up the vagina right 
but they're still fucking horrible. Have you ever seen... Oh, God, I was watching a documentary about, uh, you know, vet, uh, animal doctors. Uh, vet, vet, I can't say it. Veterinary doctors that go out into the countryside looking after animals and stuff. And I saw this one where they cleaned out a fucking horse's foreskin. And it was fucking disgusting. She had to, like, put her hand inside the foreskin and then scoop out what looked like uh, clotted cheese. You know that stuff, a uh, uh, coleslaw that you put on, like, a salad? It looked like that. And you could smell it through the fucking TV. And it was covered in, like, twigs and stones and just other things where they've been rolling around on the ground and things get stuck inside the horse's foreskin and it becomes infected. And honestly, it looked like clotted cheese. It's just getting a big fucking handful, scraping it out of this fucking ma this massive foreskin. And then she was like flinging it off her wrist onto the floor just to get rid of it. Just like, yeah, scoop that out. <laughs> Slap that onto the floor, get rid of it. Here's another big handful. Slap it on the floor. Full of twigs and stones. And honestly, oh, just, ugh, fucking disgusting. Absolutely horrible. <laughs> So frogs uh, bums, apparently, is the answer to that. I prefer a frog's arse to uh, monkey genitalia. Um, her next question, again, this is Bunny, and she says, if I got free flight tickets to Minnesota to see the world's largest ball of twine, but then return immediately home again, would I do it? The answer is yes. Would I fly all that way to Minnesota just to see a giant ball of twine? And then immediately come back. Yes, I would, because it doesn't sound like much of a holiday. Like, oh, what, you've got to go all that way. And then just to see that and then come back again. I mean, that sounds like a shit holiday. If you think the only interesting part is seeing the ball of string. Um, but if you, may, if you had the mindset that that is what you're going to do, that is the holiday. Then, you know, going to the airport is part of it. Getting on the plane is part of it and seeing all those different people from around the world all sat together on a plane and thinking oh I wonder who that person is you know I love people watching and shit um, but being on the plane looking at the view out the window landing at the airport seeing a totally different airport with like security walking around with fucking guns and shit thinking oh my god um, the drive on the way to the ball of string actually seeing the ball of string probably talking to a few people or whatever I guess I'm there for maybe like three hours or something. And then come back. Yeah, I would. Why not? <laughs> it's free. So someone's paying for it. What have I got to lose? Nothing. Um, yeah, 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 I'd do that. Because why not? It'd just be like, a, it's a story to tell. And I get to look at the scenery along the way. Even if I don't get to stay for very long, you know. It's still something. Uh and then another question from Bunny, the last one. She says, would I rather season my popcorn with <laughs> testicle cheese or foot shavings? Uh, I'm going to go with foot shavings. I mean, who seasons popcorn with anything anyway? I'm picturing like salt and... Well, well no, it's just salt, isn't it? Salt, popcorn, and then sprinkling this ground up cheese or foot shavings like it's fucking parmesan in a posh restaurant and i'm you know dropping it all over my popcorn uh well no why, why am i even thinking about it it's not gonna be fucking ball cheese is it cheesy but like what so i've been or someone has been wanking they've got jizz all over the balls and then they've let it go hard and crust over and then they've scraped that off into a little dish and I've got to sprinkle that over my popcorn. There's no way I'm fucking doing that. Uh, foot shavings. I mean, that's still fucking disgusting. Hopefully they're not foot shavings from someone who's got athlete's foot. Uh, but then again, it's just dead skin. And haven't we all kind of chewed on a bit of dead skin every now and then? Do you ever do that? Do you ever like peel the skin off of your feet, some hardened skin or whatever? And then you just have that overwhelming urge to like, chew on it between your teeth do you ever do that <laughs> i kind of do that with nails as well i'll pick off my um toenails or my thumbnails and then they're always kind of uh thick not thick like a an old man who's got big yellow nails or whatever 
but um, you then bend them in half and then just give them a bite between your teeth. I mean, it sounds weird, it sounds horrible, like, oh, what, you've got fucking dead skin in your mouth, who's fucking doing that, that's horrible. But I think it's just one of those, like, little primitive urges in our underdeveloped monkey brains. Because, like, why else do I have the feeling of wanting to, to do that? I don't need to put the fucking dead skin from my toe <laughs> in my mouth and chew it, but I still want to anyway. Um, and I like doing it. So, there we go. So, yeah, I guess foot shavings, I don't really want to eat fucking... I don't want to swallow... Oh, God, so I've got bits of dead uh, foot shavings. I've got dead skin in my mouth and also popcorn in general, which is the fucker for, like, clinging to your teeth or getting stuck between your teeth and all that. So that, I mean, that's aggravating anyway. Popcorn's nice, but I don't really like eating it. You're always licking bits out of your gums. Um... And then that, on top of the foot shavings, bits of dead skin in your mouth. But it's better than the testicle cheese. You know, dried up, flaky old bits of someone's fucking spunk on my popcorn. While I'm trying to enjoy a film. Uh, so yeah, yeah, no, it would be foot shavings. Okay, um, <laughs> a more uh, normal fucking innocent question from Corey. And he says, who are your biggest influences? And then I think he said, um, you've probably answered this before. I have, I've answered it in other questions, so I'll just kind of make it quick. Um, oh, but it's not really a quick answer because I haven't got, I haven't taken loads of influence from, but the main thing would be the Beano and the Dandy, which were two comics in the UK. Um, when I was little, everybody read them. There's no one in the UK who doesn't know the Beano and the Dandy. Um, you'd get a free toy and a free suite with every issue um, and I, I started copying from there and then also um, yeah one time I came home from school my dad had these big bits of paper that he'd bought I didn't even know that he could draw and he'd drawn um, a load of different Warner Brothers characters and um, he drew like three for me and three for my sister I think and then we hung them in our bedroom and I had the one that he drew of uh, Wild E. Coyote um, riding um, a bomb or something. He's like falling out of the sky on a rocket. Um, I was like, oh, that's cool. And I tried to copy that. So those drawings that my dad did of the Warner Brothers characters that are hung in my room, those were a big influence that made me want to go, oh, I want to draw as well. And then I was like, oh, what can I copy? And I had Beano and Dandy issues laying around. So I just opened them up and started copying them. And then it all just kind of went from there, really. And then the artists that I've kind of looked to, I've gone, oh, man, I wish I could be like that, would be H.R. Geiger and um, very generic answers that aren't going to wow anybody. <laughs> but um, H.R. Geiger and Francis Bacon, um, who does the really angry, mad, visceral, fucking uh, scary shit. Um if you don't know who Francis Bacon is, um, uh, just just look him up. You, you'll know it as soon as you see it. I can't really explain it. It's very abstract and surreal and fucking just, uh, well, mad. It's just insane. It's like looking into the mind of a fucking insane person. I don't think anyone's ever captured, uh, I don't know, the beauty of violence as well as um, Francis Bacon did. So those guys... Okay, uh, next question from Dylan says, if you could combine, I just need a, I need a drink, hang on. Uh, where was I? Right, Dylan says, if you could combine, if you could combine two movies to make a TV show, what would they be? Two movies to make a TV show, what would they be? Um, I think, yeah, I, d I did have an answer. What was it? I thought about it earlier. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Uh, right, so, you know, they've done the the Muppet show and then they do, like, spin-off films. They do Muppets, Treasure Island, Muppets, Christmas Carol, Muppets in Space. Um, you know, they do those films and stuff and there's always, like, a theme well, at the moment, like, Mad Max, post-apocalyptic, fallout, borderlands, uh, nuclear wasteland theme 
stuff is quite big at the moment, isn't it? I was, I was thinking, why don't they do like a a Muppets Mad Max where, I don't know, Hollywood's been wiped out by a giant flood or something and uh, some of the celebrities are still living and a bunch of them that are, are the Muppets. But like, this is years later and everything's turned into Mad Max. You know, everyone's a fucking punk with a, a ring through their nose and wearing clothes made out of fucking old road signs and shit like that you know mad max um but the muppets are also like that they all look like fucking wasteland punks and stuff but um and then because it's set in hollywood you know because it's the muppet show um you can just fill the film with loads of um celebrity cameos you can have danny devito in it he's some kind of like uh, wasteland punk warlord or something who wants the muppets dead or some shit, I don't know. <laughs> maybe the maybe uh, celebrities want the Muppets dead so that they can steal their fabric to make clothing or something. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but I just think that would be... I've got this image in my head of all the Muppets looking like wasteland punks riding those massive vehicles made out of random things. Um, but because it's the Muppet show, maybe their vehicles are like more fun and colourful and vibrant, but still have that post-apocalyptic wasteland aesthetic to it. Um, I just think that could be really cool. Uh, and that, that did remind me of um, an idea that I had ages ago that was just floating around in my head. And I always think, oh, that's really cool, but it's never going to happen <laughs> because I don't know how to. Like, how do you ring up Hollywood and just go, I've got an idea, and then it happens? I mean, that, that doesn't happen, right? Uh, most ideas just stay in people's heads. But um, I. I, I, I fucking love the film Shaun of the Dead. Um, it's brilliant. It's one of my favourite films. I love Simon Pegg and Nick Frost and the rest of the cast in that film. It's just a really good film. I fucking love it. And I'm surprised there was never a sequel. And I was thinking years ago. I mean, I had this idea probably about 15 years ago or something. Um, I was thinking, why don't they do a follow-up? Especially now that loads of time has passed, so they'll look older in the film. But uh, Shaun of the Dead ends with everything having turned out okay and the zombies because they still retain some of what they did in a past life they're um they're able to be put back into work so you know they're washing windows or um pushing trolleys around a supermarket stuff like that really simplistic stuff that the zombies can still do and that's kind of how the film ends and that's fine but like what if there's a sequel where it turns out that things weren't so fine and um like religious cults um started fucking fighting and shit because of this whole zombie thing has opened up this uh existential crisis that everyone's having like oh my god is god real or not you know what's actually going on we need to look into why this zombie thing happened and the result of everyone looking into it is that the world just collapsed and london has fallen into like a mad max kind of scenario um there's no water there's no electric everything's shit sean and his girlfriend um that they've broken up again <laughs> um and the, the the film would be sean and ed but ed's still a zombie but you know at the end of the film where the he they're playing computer games together in the shed um it's almost like sean's keeping him as a pet so i was thinking in this film which should be called the first one's called sean of the dead this one should be called dawn of the ed and it's Sean going around this uh, post-apocalyptic London with Ed on a leash. He's like, got him on a chain like a pet, like this is his dog or something. And uh, I'm sure Nick Frost could do a wonderful job of playing like an absent-minded, thick-headed zombie who's kind of like a dumb dog or something. <laughs> I can see that working. And Sean finds out through some kind of like old CB radio that there's this science lab out, out, outside of London where... They've made some sort of cure that returns your zombified loved ones back into being something more like they were before they became zombies. And he's like, well, I've got nothing left to lose. I've broken up again. The world's a load of shit. I just want to be with my fucking mate. I just want my mate again. And so he treks off across London, which is a big wasteland now, bumps into all these different other fucking characters who keep their zombies as pets, you know, their loved ones. Um... I just think that's a really cool idea, and then Dawn of the uh, Dawn of the Ed works as a title because it's like um, it's the dawn of him again. It's him becoming uh, well, 
it is the dawn of Ed becoming Ed again, if you know what I mean. Um, something like that, anyway. <laughs> I can see that film in my head, and it totally works. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, they should do that. Why not do... Because Shaun of the Dead was like a... Um, not a piss take, but it was like a massive homage to the zombie genre. So why not? And now that, like, the post-apocalyptic genre is such a thing as well, and has been for ages... Um, why not make Dawn of the Ed a big homage to the post-apocalyptic Mad Max uh, genre, you know? It could work. I really think that could work. Um, but then again, I would say that because it's my idea, isn't it? But um, uh, what else? What other question? I've got one more question. I thought I was going to talk for a lot longer. <laughs> um, Starshine says, what happens if you get scared half to death twice? I think the simple answer to that is, well, you're fucking dead then, aren't you? If you get scared half to death twice, then you're, um, then yeah, I guess you're dead. I don't know. Unless you, um, uh, is it possible to be scared to death? Like, actually, so, well, yeah, I guess so, because then if you're so fucking scared... Like, if you genuinely, um, I don't know, you were in the woods and a bear was ripping into your tent or something, could you be so scared that you then basically just have a heart attack, I guess? But then that's having a heart attack, isn't it? That's I was scared so much that I had a heart attack and then the heart attack caused me to die. But could you actually be so frightened of something that it caused you to die? I don't know. I find it, um, do you find it weird that, like, you can see, like, there's things that will scare you, say there's, like, a, a monster in a film or something that you really hate, and when you see a picture of it, you're like, oh, my God, that scares the shit out of me, I hate that, uh, people can make you jump whilst wearing a horrible mask or whatever, and that, and that will shit you up, um, I mean, there's lots of ways that, like, outside of yourself, externally, in the real world, like, there's things that will scare the shit out of you, but it's really hard to scare the shit out of yourself internally. Like, I mean, I can close my eyes right now, and I'm doing my best to try and think of, like, what is the scariest face in the world? Like, what is the scare... Like, I'm trying to picture it, and no matter what I picture, it isn't scary enough to make me go, Oh, oh, God, stop thinking about that, stop thinking about that, get out of my head, get out of my head. Like, that never happens. But like, that happens in real life when you see something scary but it never I mean you could just say well that's because you know it's just inside your own head but like I mean I'll do it when I'm fucking when I'm high and you just lay there and like I don't know about some people but when I'm high my fucking brain just like goes off on one with visual imagery and it shows me all kinds of like random stuff it's like I'm watching my brain think without me and I'm just observing images and I do it then, I'm like, right, come on, come tr try and think of like a really disgusting, fucking horrible, scary, so scary, no one's even thought of it before, face. And I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> it just seems impossible to actually scare yourself mentally in your own head. I guess if you've got a lot of mental problems and stuff, that's probably a lot easier I guess if you've had a traumatic past or whatever, you can just think back on previous traumas, and I'm sure that triggers some horrible feelings. But um, but but in a more like cartoony uh, uh, pantomime sense of the word fear, like, oh god, oh, I'm so scared, I'm shaking. In that sense, it's really hard to think of something that will actually really scare you. Um. So yeah, there you go. How much longer have I got? <laughs> and I've still got a while. Um, I thought I had more questions, but I haven't. Um, who agrees with my fucking Dawn of the Ed idea? It seems like such an obvious, an obvious choice for a sequel. Just like, yeah, do that. That'd be that'd be awesome. I'm not going to go back to talking about that. I spent long enough on that a moment ago. Um, uh, I'm sweating my bollocks off and I don't know why. 
I've got a fan in the distance, but I can't feel it because it has to be so far back that you can't hear it on the fucking recording. Otherwise, it all just sounds like shh in the background and it's fucking annoying. Um, oh, God, right. What am I doing now? Uh, let's have a look around my <laughs> room for inspiration, for something to talk about before this completely derails. Uh, fucking hell. I look around my room and I see things and I think, oh, you could talk about that. And I think, yeah, haven't I talked about that in another video? And then I think, well, who watched the fucking video anyway? Um, does it matter if you repeat yourself? Uh, but then if I do repeat myself, it's boring for the people who um, did see it last time. Uh, fuck, what can I talk about? Uh, <laughs> Uh, and, uh, let's just keep saying, um, till the end of the video. Now, let's not do that. Um, <laughs> I've got a keyboard here. I was going to start writing stories and stuff. I've got a cordless, uh, like, blue, Bluetooth speaker for writing stories. And then I was going to write, I was going to read out the stories that I've written and then just upload them in the video. Um, and they were just going to be really surreal, stupid, nonsense kind of stories because I'm not great at writing or anything, but I still like doing it anyway. I like doing anything creative, you know. I don't think I'm the master of anything. I mean, I'm pretty fucking good at drawing, but there's other creative things that I like to do. And having a go at typing up some sort of story is one of them. But it always comes through in, like, little little waves of fad uh always just feels like a fad um i start writing a story and i never really see it through to the end although the story that i'm writing it like i mean it kind of goes nowhere so that i can just deliberately keep adding to it and it's just going to be like a load of fucking surreal nonsense and then i was going to read it out and then i thought no don't don't read it out um god when i uh because all my hair's fallen out now and I've got like a big old fucking bald patch on top of my head. When I run my fucking hand over that bald patch bit, it's like a fucking swimming pool of sweat. It's fucking horrible. <laughs> I've been contemplating, like, should I wear wigs? Because like, I don't give a fuck that my head is, um, well, you, you know, it's thinning so badly that I basically might as well just keep my head shaved because there's no point in trying to look like I've got hair when I haven't. Um, and I don't give a fuck, like, I've got a normal shaped head, my skull looks absolutely fine, there's no weird, like, marks and, uh, like a fucking, what do you call it, uh, like a big liver spot or something like that. Like, underneath my hair isn't hiding anything, so when I shave it, it's fine, and I look fine with a shaved head, I had a shaved head all the way through school, pretty much. Um, I still think, like, oh, it'd be nice to, you know just kind of look like well or just to have hair again and like some wigs are like you know super convincing no one would ever know that you're wearing one and i wouldn't give a fuck if they did know and they would know the people that know me know that my hair didn't grow back overnight this is a this is a weird one talking of wigs elton john right he's been bald all his life his hair fell out at a very early age and so everyone knew that early on early on in his career he was bald everyone knew that he was bald that's what he looked like and then he started wearing wigs and it's like okay well we all know that you're wearing a wig because we know you can't grow hair but whatever that's fair enough like i'm saying right now i can give a fuck if i wore a wig i don't care that elton john wore, wore a wig um but then what he started to do <laughs> was over the years he kept wearing a wig even though he's bald and he hasn't got any hair of his own and everyone knows that he's wearing a wig um but then he started wearing wigs later on in life that looked as if like he's his hair was thinning like his wigs were thinning you know what i mean there's like a part in his career where he's wearing a wig but the wig looks like he's going thin on top it's delib deliberately designed like that and it's like yeah but you're elton john like everyone knows everything about your life mate do you not think uh people don't know that you're naturally bald because you can't grow hair especially your own fans so it's one thing to wear a wig. That's fine, wear a wig. But then who who on earth are you trying to fool <laughs> it, by wearing a wig that looks like it's, you know, that's made to look like you're going, that, that your hair's thinning, your your wig is thinning. It's just fucking stupid, isn't it? Like, who does that? 
It's not fooling me. He's not fooling himself. He's certainly not fooling his fans. It's just like, what's the point of that? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Each to their own, I guess. Uh, as we're now two minutes towards the end, shall I talk about the mask? Um, the mask is uh, it's looking good. I've got it in front of me here. Um, I'm quite happy with how it turned out. I put some like, um, I mean, I did a lot more to it in this video. I only really concentrated on the eye because I just wanted to try and recall something for the sakes of doing the part three. Um, but I've done the rest now and then I put some blood splatter on it as well. Um, I just kind of want to darken it up a bit and bring out features that you kind of can't see because it's kind of looking a bit too it's just not looking grubby enough i feel like when the oil paint isn't quite so sticky and tacky like it is at the moment when that's dry in probably about a week's time i'm gonna start putting like uh just drizzling darker watercolors over it you know just very very watery and just let that cascade down the um down the mask and sit in those little like recessed areas and dry out and then sort of wipe it off just so that those little crevices and stuff are all highlighted with some sort of detail and it needs to look grubbier grubbier as well because i think that looks quite realistic there what i've done um i've done a lot more to it than what's in this video um but it could, it could do with grubbying up and also the, uh, the the bits and pieces that are tying the uh, the mouth area together, they need wiping because they've got paint all over them, and that obviously looks like it makes no sense because the idea is that it doesn't look painted, even though it does. I'm not that good. I can't make it look photorealistic, but um, yeah, you get the general idea. I'll make it look a bit grubbier, dirtier, and then it can sit on my shelf again for another fucking ten years or whatever, <laughs> collecting dust. I've got a Texas Chainsaw Massacre one I'm thinking about playing around with, but I might do, I might not. Anyway, cheers, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye, bye, bye.